Welcome to the Bottom Line View. I am Anthony, and today we have a great debate here between two of our own from the Bottom Line View. We're going to go over five different topics about the NFL each round. I'm going to pick a winner, but we want you guys to say who the winner is in the comment section below as well. We've got a five-minute time limit for each of these topics. So without further delay, let's get into the first one, and it's about the most recent thing in the NFL that is the Super Bowl. The Eagles, the Patriots, these two teams went to the Super Bowl. Now, with that said, which of these two teams do we think could potentially return to the Super Bowl again next year? Let's start out with our Patriots fan, of course. Let's start out here. All right, Anthony. Thanks for the fine introduction. This is the Bottom Line Debate Show, the first ever episode. I'm excited to kick it off with this debate the Patriots, man. Obviously, it's the Patriots. Are you kidding me? All right, they have Tom Brady, Bill Belichick. Do I need to list any more reasons? Okay, this there is no team since the Patriots in 2003 and 2004 that is repeated. All right, so the Eagles are basically not going to repeat. So only the Patriots have done that. You add on the fact that the Patriots are going to have a stronger roster in 2018. Their offense is going to be unstoppable. You're bringing back Julian Edelman into the fold along with Brandon Cooks and Rob Gronkowski and this unstoppable offense. Then you have a better draft stock this year. You have a first round pick, but you also have two second round picks. That Jimmy Garoppolo trade does come in handy at one point. Um, the Eagles, they'll actually have pressure on them and this year. And minutes up, time to switch <laughs> over. All right. That was a quick 60 seconds. Uh, okay. I, was so, giving, I was giving the introduction to the show, sort of. So, yeah. Go ahead, Dylan. D tell me why these Eagles are going to do well. I, it, it's not going to happen. I, you know, I'm a Cowboys fan, but I got to go pick the Eagles on this side. They got the youth. They, they've got some kind of quality talent here. I like the head coaching styles that we have presented with the Eagles. I said in the preseason of last year that they were one year away. They surprised me. So they're already one, one step ahead of the process. Um, they're getting back Carson Wentz. Let's remember that he was obviously out in week 13 of this season and didn't even play in the playoffs, so he's going to come in with the experience. Um, maybe not week one, but Nick Foles is still going to be the quarterback. they got a lot of young talent that I like personally. Um, the NFC is a very shaky conference, but you look at the Patriots organization, there's some turmoil. You don't know. Patricia's going to be leaving as the, uh, going to the – Lions, a lot of and stuff. And the minutes up, time for you two debate with each other for the last three minutes. Dylan, you just said that the Patriots are going through turmoil. Who, who, what articles are you reading? Are you on ESPN too? Hey, hey, I'm not going through all the stuff, but I'm saying that there is some questions about whether the Patriots are going to continue their success going forward. What about the Eagles, though? They okay, fan or, or what's their what's their De Filippo? He's gone, quarterback coach. Their oh. offensive coordinator, Frank Reich, is gone. That's two more coaches. The Patriots only lost one coach, Josh McDaniels, the great snake. He's back, <laughs> the great snake. Yes, well, I mean, yeah, but you're not losing as much, you're not losing a lot of that core talent that got them there, and you're replacing your core, you're getting back your quarterback that was the MVP or an MVP candidate up for 12 or 13 weeks or whatever. There's a lot of potential I see coming out there. I think the Patriots organization might be getting a little bit old and the the train the competition for the AFC is stepping up. You got the team like the Jaguars, who we've complimented many times as a team that could be taking over in the AFC. The Eagles look like their competition, there's going to be a lot of competition, but nobody has proven themselves right now to be above the Eagles. But but didn't the wasn't the NFC the stronger conference this year? Am I, am I wrong when saying that? I, I don't know. I, I, I think about some of the teams there. Aaron Rodgers is back. God himself. All right. You have Anthony's Vikings. You have Drew Brees and the Saints. There's a lot of good teams in the NFC, and you still have to deal with the man that's never lost, Jimmy Garoppolo. <laughs> man, that's never lost. Uh, yes. And, and, and I just want to say this. The Eagles will actually have pressure on them this year. They're not the underdog. They can't just walk out there with their underdog masks and say, hey, we're still underdogs. They're actually champions, people. There's going to be a target on their back like the Patriots have every single year. But don't you think they have the confidence now that because they beat the Patriots in the Super Bowl? Maybe but was the confidence fake because they were underdogs? 
they were underdogs at that point, but now this season they could come in with the confidence level that they have. As long as they don't get too cocky, this could be a team that's very dangerous going forward because they beat these teams last season. They and could- that that's exactly my point. Are they ready to be the favorites? Because they've been riding this underdog thing. The Patriots know what it takes to get back there. They've been a team that's gone to seven straight AFC championship games. So we can basically pencil them in right now to be there in January. We don't know what the Eagles are going to be doing. That's probably true in the AFC Championship game, but you never know those teams that could be sneaking up in the AFC. The Houston Texans are going to get a lot better with Deshaun coming back to the QB and a lot of healthy players coming back to the organization. We talked about the Jags. I know Deshaun we Watson him. could just very well be RG3. We don't know. He blew his knee out. RG3 was great. And with that, we have a great first one. We are now done. Before we go on to the next questions, First, leave in the comments below who you think won the first round of the debate. Personally, I'm going to go with Mitch here. He made some good points about the Patriots. I think Dylan had an uphill battle to begin with anyway. Uh, But he made good points about the Patriots, pretty much saying how the NFC is just a lot more difficult uh, for uh, the Eagles. And really, if you look at the NFC, nothing against the Eagles, but at least with the Patriots, you're 100% sure they're winning the division. Not for sure the Eagles can win their division, especially with the Cowboys not too far behind them. But along the lines of the NFC, we have to look at the team that was also in the NFC Championship with the Philadelphia Eagles, my Minnesota Vikings. They have the biggest offseason in terms of quarterback. They have so many decisions of what to make at quarterback, go outside, stay within. But there's three quarterbacks that stand above the rest. Sam Bradford, Case Keenum, Teddy Bridgewater. If you had to choose... Which one of these three quarterbacks do you think should come back to the Minnesota Vikings and be the starting quarterback next year? Since Mitch went first last time, let's go with Dylan here. All right. So I'm taking uh, Bradford out of the equation. He's got too many injuries. So that leaves me with between Keenum and Bridgewater. And I'm going to go with Bridgewater on this decision. Uh, He's not the strongest of QBs. But he is a quarterback that they drafted, you know, in the first round of 2013. They've got a lot of confidence in him. Um, He led them to the playoffs in 2015, his last season before getting hurt with the ACL injury. Uh, Keenum did play very well last year, as you can see the results, but he also did have a great defense ahead of him. And then you saw in the playoffs that there were some struggles that you could see out of Keenum. Sometimes he made some really good throws. Other times it looked like the case Keenum of old. Uh, Bridgewater, this was their project that they put a lot of time and effort into before that happened, before the ACL injury. And I know it's questionable whether or not to go back with a quarterback of that style, but if you're going to put the time and investment, I think Bridgewater is the safest decision out of these three quarterbacks. So my quarterback is Bridgewater. All right, with a few seconds to spare, Mitch, your turn. All right, so I'm going with Case Keenum, CSM Bradford. I think Case Keenum is the guy in Minnesota because, first off, Teddy Bridgewater is best season he ever had. He's only ever thrown 14 touchdown passes. Case Keenum this past season, he went 11 and 3, got them a division round by, got them some home field advantage. He was 63% passing, uh 3500 yards, which is more yards than Teddy Bridgewater's ever thrown. 22 touchdowns. More touchdowns than Teddy Bridgewater's ever thrown. A 98 rating. Better rating than Teddy Bridgewater's ever had. He opened up the passing game. He allowed Adam Thielen to shine, Stephon Diggs to shine. And the guy is a hero. What he did against the New Orleans Saints will forever be remembered. Case Keenum has got to be the quarterback uh, for Minnesota this season. If All I right, was- you both finished some extra time. Now it's time for the debate. Okay. Um, Let's go, so- Dylan. Bring it. <laughs> so with Keenum, you don't think this is going to be a one-season uh showing you know you think he can produce for multiple seasons at least he's had a season well Bridgewater got him to the playoffs he still looked decent enough and the thing is is I think this is a project that they want to continue to go with with Bridgewater they they had him in the first round they see the potential that they had and he's getting a lot he's got a lot of talent on that offense as well but like I said, is is Teddy really that talented? That's the question first we're going to ask. Is, is he really is. is he really that good? Because Case Keenum has already proven that he can have a better year than Teddy Bridgewater's ever had. Plus, he has had one more win in the playoffs. And this is a guy that already is comfortable with the receivers. Teddy Bridgewater is going to have to come back in 
and he's going to have to have find this new rapport with his teammates while Case Keenum already has this rapport with his teammates and everybody trusts him and believes in him in him as the quarterback. So, well, with Bridgewater, first off, if he had, if Blair Walsh knows how to kick a football, they would be going farther in that playoffs. I just Blair, want to that we know that Blair Walsh can't be counted he on. Yeah, but you're, that's not on Bridgewater to lose that football game. And second, with, with Case Keenum, we've also seen him have historic or not historically, but really bad seasons under his wing too. I mean, the four and 12, 2015 clusterfuck with Jared Goff, you know, getting replaced from the twenty sixteen season, I should say. So we've seen Case Keenum have bad. Seasons I will say before. this: Jeff Fisher was his coach. That does not count. Oh, okay. <laughs> Let's just erase all that history that we have there. I do hate Jeff Fisher, but we've seen Case Keenum not be productive before this season. This could be one of those seasons where he's that one and done kind of QB. And can you trust on that if you're going to sign a big deal to one of these three quarterbacks? At least with Bridgewater, your team made this decision that he was the starter before anybody else of these two. And I think you got to give the money to the guy you had first. But Teddy is coming off an injury. How do we know he's going to be 100% uh, healthy coming into this season? While Case Keenum is a guy that is fresh, he's ready to go, and he's off his best year ever, while Teddy Bridgewater still has more questions coming into this year if he can be a legitimate starting quarterback. While Case Keenum, even if he's not the quarterback for Minnesota, he's going to be a quarterback somewhere else. He probably will. I, my, my thing is that you're going to want to offer more money one of these two guys, right? That's the question. Who, who are you going to put more money investing to in the future of the Vikings? Maybe not just this season, but for the next three, four seasons. And a guy like Bridgewater, I think if you get past that first hurdle, you see that he now has Dalvin Cook under him. He has some great receiver talent. The offensive line should be getting better. I think Bridgewater is more of a long-term investment that they want to improve on than somebody like Keenum, who we don't know. It could be very shaky what Keenum's going to bring to us. And Keenum, he didn't even have Cook as his running back. You did bring that up. So he, well, imagine the damage he could have done there. If this, and, and it, he wasn't even the reason why they lost to the All Eagles. right, there we go. There's round two of the debate. My Minnesota Vikings love hearing about them. Now, of course, before I give my opinion, I'd love to hear yours in the comments section below. Personally, this time, Mitch, I'm not going with you. I'm going to go with Dylan. What sold me with him was the argument about Blair Walsh. He's a I think fan. That's, I'm still not even 100% sure with what I want for the Vikings, I'll be honest. But uh, with what sold me was the Blair Walsh remark because I remember that playoff game. Teddy got them to where they needed to be to win the game, and Blair Walsh cost them. Of course, as a Vikings fan, who knows what would have happened if they made the kick, but... So, so be it. And as we continue on, we keep talking about quarterbacks this time. We go to the other big name quarterback right now, Kirk Cousins. And we talk about the New York Jets. Kirk Cousins is going to be paid a lot of money. And should the New York Jets be the team that pays a Kirk Cousins and have it be whatever it takes to get him? Uh, let's start out with Mitch this time. All right. So I personally think that no they should not go all out for Kirk Cousins. I think there are teams to go all out for Kirk Cousins. I've stated I'm a Kirk Cousins fan, but I believe that the Jets are the team not to go after him because I think the Jets are still too far off. When you have to put all that money into a quarterback and put the, all that money into one position, you are probably going to be a team that's only a quarterback away from winning a Super Bowl or going far in the playoffs. And to me, even if the Jets do get a quarterback like Kirk Cousins, they're putting all their money and all basically their eggs into one basket. And they're asking Kirk Cousins to carry a team. And what do you really have with Kirk Cousins if you're the Jets? You basically end up being what? The Washington Redskins of last year. I don't really see much of a difference between those two teams in terms of talent pool. They still need help with their corner situation. They still need help on the offensive line. They need to improve a lot of different areas of their team. And I don't think that the Jets... All right, switch over. Uh, okay, so the question is whether the should pay uh, and not where Kirk Cousins should go. I think if you're a team organization, I feel like the Jets would want to pay as much as possible for Kirk Cousins to get to that team. I mean, Kirk Cousins, we've seen, he is a leader. The Redskins didn't really trust him in the process, but with the Jets organization, there is some, you know, opportunity to raise up in the stakes. Uh, we've seen, you know, the last couple of seasons have not been very good for the Jets. 
Uh, they've been struggling continuously. Last year, they had one of their best records in the last five or six seasons, 5-11 and 11 with Josh McCown until he got injured, uh, a quarterback that's very average. Uh, maybe it was the effort and the drive of the Jets organization, but they got something going with a decent QB. B. And you got a talent like Kirk Cousins, who is a lot better, uh, no offense to McCown, a lot better than Josh McCown. Uh, and maybe he can bring some spunk into this organization that it desperately needs to make at least a playoff run. And I'm All to... right, there we go. All right, so where, where, where are your, where's your head in? With the... All right, so what I'm thinking here is you said Josh McCown was average last year. Josh McCown was pretty good last year. Did you watch Josh McCown play? He had a 94.5 passer rating, 18 touchdowns, only nine picks in 13 games. Kirk Cousins, I mean, he wasn't anything that special. If we're talking about just comparing those two quarterbacks, I know they played on separate teams, but like 4,000 yards, 27 and 13, and he had a worse passer rating overall than Josh McCown. So uh, Josh McCown overall wasn't that bad. So if we're saying that Josh McCown is like a really bad quarterback, I just think that yeah. But I'm saying like, how much is Kirk Cousins going to improve this team? My whole point basically is that I don't think with Kirk Cousins the Jets are that much better than they already are. I think they need to improve the rest of their team. Now, if you're talking about a team like Jacksonville or Denver or a team like that then sure, I think they should go all out for Kirk Cousins. But when it comes to the Jets, I don't think so. I think I think there is some truth to whether these other teams should be going for him. But in terms of the Jets organization, I mean, you can't get much worse than where they're at right now. They're, they are in a level of mediocrity that's, you know, a, a couple of teams have been st- uh, struggling in for years. And I think the Jets organization would, would benefit from a QB like Kirk Cousins going there. Uh, they need to work on some other issues as well. Like you said, there's other talent that needs to be addressed, especially in the draft. Uh, but there was questions about whether or not Baker Mayfield was going to get drafted by the Jets. Uh, that was one of the uh, options in the first. But the thing there is he's a lot cheaper to get. If like if they draft a quarterback and he ends up being good, then you just made your team that much better because he's cheaper than what Kirk Cousins would be. Plus, you'd be able to spend that money somewhere else. Well, also, you don't know, but we don't know what the experience of Baker Mayfield is going to bring us. I think he'll be a great quarterback, but we don't know. The, you've got it the could be any of the guys in the draft. doesn't have to be Baker, but, it, you know, I'm just but saying. You, you know what you're what if, what if they strike gold and they get a Russell Wilson? That, Boom. That'll be unlikely, but, you know, you, you at least know what you're getting out of a Kirk Cousins right now. You've seen him on the field. You've seen him in the NFL level. The Redskins did not put so a lot Dylan, of trust in him. Are the Jets contenders with Kirk Cousins? They might make the sixth seed of the playoffs. They're going to at least – Is gonna, that worth it in the long run when you're thinking as a GM that, hey, maybe I could pick – I'm a GM. I'm going to feel like I'm going to pick the best quarterback in the draft and I'm going to be able to fix my team that way. Well, I'm not talking – this is not a one-year process. This is a multiple-year process depending on how large the contract could have be signed. That's only the first step. It's going to be the most money ever. It's right? gonna, yeah, but you're going to put a lot of trust in that guy, and then you're going to further grasp your team. You're like, okay, now we have a support system. Now we have somebody we can trust at the high level. There we go. Round three now is done, of course. Leave your uh, winner in the comment section below for round three. Personally, oh, man, this is a tough one. I think I'm going to go with Mitch here, making the argument about how uh, at the end of the day, the best – the Patriots could do is what a sixth seed. That's what Dylan thinks. Is the that Jets. worth it? You is that worth it when you could draft <laughs> a young guy and develop him? I will go here uh, with Mitch. So now, as we keep on going, keep on rolling, uh, we look at a team like the Jets. They have a lot of off-season needs. So let's talk about these teams. What team is in need of the best off-season uh, as we head into the off-season? Uh, this time around, oh, we'll we'll switch back. We'll go with Dylan this time. Okay, so this is now a, a more open question. All 32 teams are available for this answer, and I'm going to go with my Dallas Cowboys here uh, as my answer. Uh, I think the Cowboys obviously seen that the Philadelphia Eagles just made it to the Super Bowl, so they need to compete in their division. They fell off from 13-3 and to 9-7. and A lot of questions within the organization about whether – Coaching needs to be changed or what needs to be done. There's a lot of talent there, but there are a couple of key needs that the Cowboys need to do. First off, they need to get a couple of receivers, especially maybe draft one in the first round because the receiver talent is lacking and Dez doesn't want to take a pay cut. So 
he might need to be gone and, and have somebody take over in that wide receiver position. You need to sign Demarcus Lawrence, who's a free agent, and that's a big free agent loss if uh, he's going to be going somewhere else. And the Cowboys need to beef up their team so they can still remain contenders in that NFC East because it's going to get a lot more. Obviously, the New York Giants just hired a new head coach. Alex Smith now going to the Redskins. You got the Eagles, uh, Super Bowl champions, a lot of contention. And there we go. Next up. All right. See how, like, narrow-sighted he is? He's he's picking his team, the Cowboys. I, I'm going with the Cleveland Browns. Why am I going with the Cleveland Browns? Because they need. this is the year. They need to execute or else they're going to remain 0-16 for the next 50 years. I swear to God. Look at the Cleveland Browns this year. They have $100 million in cap space to spend. They have two of the top four first-round picks, and they have three second-round picks. They need to execute this year in the offseason. Which team is in need of the best offseason? It's the Cleveland Browns. If they don't hit on those picks, they're effed, all right? They're done. They need to execute on these picks, um, and they're— they were 0-16 last year. Can they really go 0-16 two years in a row? Like, they yes. need to turn this around. And the thing about if the Browns do turn it around and they do hit on these picks, you could flip from an 0-16 okay. team. There we go. Time for the debate. Browns versus Cowboys. Yeah, you said you need. they needed a hit in the draft. They absolutely hit in the draft last year and still went 0-16. No, they didn't. Yeah, yes, they did. We said that was one of the best drafts of last year. What? Who'd they get other than Miles Garrett? They got Miles Garrett. They had David Ajoku. We are, a lot of people were talking about Jabril Preppers. I know you weren't a big fan of that pick, but we ranked him as the top five best teams in that draft last year. I was like, yeah, well, they need to they need to execute this year. It's not only they have a hundred million dollars of cap space. That's the most by far. Well, they could go out. Go, they go could get a Kirk Cousins. Because they can afford it. They can go out. They can get these defense. They can get a DeMarcus Lawrence. They can get these players and bring them in and completely change their team. My point is that this is the year where they can completely flip their team from not only just an 0-16 team to like a decent team, but they could flip their 0-16 team to a playoff team this year with two top four picks. If they land, uh, you know, two of the best players in the draft and then add another three starters to that. You're talking about a impact offseason. With the Cowboys, really, what are they going to do other than re-sign Demarcus Lawrence? Well, you can get rid of cap, or you can get rid of players to get some more cap space. You got to fill that up. You need to get good draft picks. You're, you're going to invest on this team because of the disappointment that we saw from last year. Thirteen to three to nine and seven. Charles Haley absolutely went on a tear about this team. Yeah, he's calling everyone fat. <laughs> he's, he's like he's a signer. He's calling people out. That, that is a great promo. He's calling people out, uh, it, mostly the head of orga, uh, coaching organization, what also needs a change. That also would I would love to have that change, but it doesn't seem like that's going to be happening. Um, but you see there's more competition there. The Eagles are going to make – they're obviously made themselves the NFC players. Uh, the Cowboys see that as intimidation because they were the laughing stock of the uh, division. Uh, and in fact, we have two playoff wins in 22 seasons, so I really don't know why we're laughing about that. But, but but is this gonna change? Is this offseason gonna change your entire history of your franchise like it will the Cleveland Browns? The Cleveland Browns haven't hit on any. If the Cleveland Browns can hit this offseason, they are set up for the rest of twenty years from now. They're they're gonna be good. Have we if, seen the, the Cowboys the hit? What what's the difference? Have we seen the success rate of the Browns in the last seventeen years when the they Cowboys have, have their quarterback? They have their running back. They have their clapper. <laughs> What else are they going to do? They don't need a clapper. They need to get rid of the clapper. I, I don't want to see any more clapping going on in Dallas, okay? But we've seen the Browns many times over fail in this department. I understand that they can they have the opportunity to do so, but we've seen – That's oh, why I'm saying that they need to. They need to. They can't do it. They, they are incompetent when it comes to it. At least with the Cowboys, there is some competency level, right, the clapper aside. There is some – work that has been put into this organization and one or two more steps can make them a contender to the Eagles in the NFC. That is my argument that I'm putting out. There. there we go. That's it for round four. Of course, leave your picks for round four in the comment section. This time for me, I'm going to go with Dylan. I think he made strong arguments about the Cowboys at the end of the day. The Browns are just really trying to do better than 0-16. The Cowboys are trying to get back to the playoffs and compete against the Super Bowl champs. I think they need a big offseason if they want to remind the NFL why they're a decent team. And he brought up how they haven't had a lot of playoff success in the last 20-plus years. 
So with that said, let's go into the last question of the day. Uh, one of the other big things we talk about besides quarterbacks are, of course, head coaches. And there was a lot of head coach buzz this year. We thought more would be fired, but there was still a good amount of guys fired and now brought in. We saw the whole Josh McDaniels debacle or what, what you would call it with Indianapolis. So with that in mind, of all the head coach signings, which one do you guys think would be the best? Let's start out with Dylan. Okay, uh, this is a big question. We're tied to two here, but I think the best head coaching hiring was John Gruden. Uh, the Raiders, uh, two seasons ago, we saw that they were a playoff team. Uh, Derek Carr got hurt. Then they fell apart this season. A lot of things were getting uh, changed up. John Gruden coming in as the coach. They're moving to Las Vegas next season, or excuse me, the season after the season. So there's going to be a lot of work on there. They're wanting to expand as big as possible. John Gruden, obviously, is a former head coach of the Raiders. He brings in a lot of experience. Uh, there's a lot of talent. I know he loves Derek Carr. When the Gruden's QB room comes out every year and he, he ranks his favorite quarterbacks, I know Derek Carr was near the top of his list because he likes the stuff that he has there, and he knows he can build him into the one of the best quarterbacks in the league. Um, and he's got a lot of young talent going there. I know he can fix the defense. He's a very good defensive coach, um, which is something that's been lacking for Oakland for a while. He wants to make this team the best in the AFC going forward with competition like the Patriots. And, he's and there we go. Working. Time to switch over to Mitch. All right. I'm going with Matt Patricia because Matt Patricia has the potential to be the next Bill Belichick. This guy is a rocket scientist, all right? He is super smart. He went across the NFL, and he not only could have been a head coach, he also, according to NFL sources, could have been a general manager. That's how smart this guy is. He works in both facets, defense, offense, general manager, coach. He was an offensive assistant, a linebacker coach, safety coach, offensive line coach, defensive coordinator, and while he was a defensive coordinator of the Patriots, they had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different top 10 scoring defenses and won three different Super Bowls. Matt Patricia, with his potential and his age, 43 years old, this is a guy that can turn around a franchise. All right, perfect timing. Time for the debate. All right, uh, first questions first. If uh, For Matt Patricia. Is he going to lead Detroit to any success? Where where's the the success level? Because the or the Detroit Lions have not made it past the first round of the playoffs, and God knows how exactly. Many. So th he is going to end up being the best coach that Detroit has ever had because he has all that that he, he he's he's coming in. His boy Bob Quinn is there. They know what to do. They're going to make the Patriot Lion way in Detroit. They already have a great quarterback in Matt Stafford. We know what he can do. And he's going to build this team, fix this defense up. And this is going to be a team like we're talking about John Gruden. What what other play does he know besides spider Y to banana? Well, first of all, he loves that play, but he definitely doesn't love bubble screens. OK, he knows he that's my know. point. Does this guy is this guy even like a 21st century? No, you he's, know? Very, well, he's a very old school minded coach, but that could be something refreshing. OK, look at the AFC West and what they bring to the table. There's a lot of questions about that division. Kansas City, they're going to have to go with Patrick Mahomes. They're my favorite of these last three teams. But they're going to have to build with a new QB in their system. Denver, I have no idea what this team is going for. John yeah, Bowen. but you're talking about the short term. We know that the NFL can turn around in one season, though. No, but the Raiders, I mean, I'm saying the Raiders want to capitalize on it because they're building on it for a decade. How it's much is John Gruden being paid? Like, more than Kirk Cousins? Like, you it's really a, had to pay this guy more than a quarterback? Like, seriously? I don't like that they paid him a lot of, that much amount of money, but obviously they're going to put a lot of money and investment to him because they're moving to this new location. Uh, and then, like I'm saying with the AFC West, San Diego, or sorry, the Los Angeles Chargers, they haven't had any success level in the playoffs in forever. So that AFC West is, is very shaky. There's always going to be a team. In the NFC North, it's getting that much more difficult to win because now you got Aaron Rodgers coming back 100% in that Green Bay team that he's led before. Minnesota just went you to never the know. championship game. And it's the, the NFL. Players, we've been saying Nobody thought the Eagles better. were going to win the Super Bowl this year. The Lions could be the Eagles. And – you know, the Lions could be the the next Patriots, judging off what Matt Patricia is going to do. I can't say the Lions are going to be the the Eagles if they haven't won a playoff game since John Gruden doesn't even like bubble screens. He's he, he's stuck in 1999. 
All right. No, he's stuck in 2002 he hasn't where he won a Super Bowl. He hasn't coached in 10 Bowl years. He this hasn't season. coached in 10 years, Dylan. 10. He's also been watching football for 10 years as a, as a commentator. Yeah, for and he didn't even know like half the rosters in the league. He's too busy making smoothies on the sidelines. Well, he's saying he's putting in like extensive work. He's gone like five times out of his ho- off, uh, office in the last and, month. And you're talking about the Lions as like a curse franchise. The Raiders have sucked for how long? Oh, oh well, not as long as the Lions. At least the Raiders want to, you know, we're getting successful in the playoffs. And with that, we have the end of the fifth and final debate here today. Of course, leave your winner in the comment section below. And if you want to wait till the end, now do it. Tell us you think won it all. I got a tie here. Personally, I probably wouldn't have picked either of these coaches. I think I would have gone with uh, the Colts bringing in Josh McDaniels. Oh, I'm sorry. Frank Reach or maybe the Vikings, Pat Schumer going to the Giants. That being said. I I think they both made strong arguments about guys that I wouldn't have necessarily thought of. Uh, that being said, I think I'm going to go with Dylan here to win today. Boo! I think John. <laughs> I think John Gruden has the ability to make his mark right away in the AFC West, and then not as strong AFC West compared to the NFC North that Matt Patricia is going to face. And if you look at their long term history. Whether you like it or not, John Gruden did have some success as a head coach in the past, but that's fresh just blood. me. It's all about the fresh blood. Fresh blood. <laughs> Everybody was hating on Sean McVay. Hey, and look, hey, Josh McDaniels did do that hot his first time around. Everybody but maybe when was he's the Patriots on Sean head McVay. coach. That's all I'm going to say. Maybe when uh, Josh McDaniels the head coach in a couple years for the Patriots. Coach of the year, right? 2018, <laughs> Mount Patricia. Okay. Oh. That's, I'm not signing on that boat. I'm, I'm jumping on that. That's bold. I, that, yeah. <laughs> and bold. Anthony just thinks his Vikings are going to be good this year, which is not true. <laughs> I, hey, I got to see the quarterback is first. <laughs> I got to see the quarterback first. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Anthony, thank you for hosting the first mm-hmm. episode. Um, you know, turning around and being our host after only joining the, you know, the channel more extensively for just the last couple of weeks. And basically, I hope you guys enjoyed this bottom line debate show. This is going to be a show that we do once a week, every Monday. And it basically, it's going to be pre recorded like it was today. And if you guys have any questions, like future questions, future debate questions for the week following that you would like us to debate um, that you think will still be relevant the week after, then make sure you put those in the comment section as well as who you think won this debate, who you think won each question, that sort of thing, and what other uh, other comments you have about the debate. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this concept. I think it went pretty well overall the first episode. And we're looking forward to doing it every single week throughout the NFL offseason and and hopefully as well through the NFL regular season, seeing how successful it is. Um, But this is another way for us to discuss the NFL in a more fun, uh, quick way throughout little mini questions. So hope you guys enjoyed Um, from Mitch, Dylan, and Anthony. If you guys have anything to plug, uh, plug your stuff, and then we'll say goodbye. Uh, We're working on a lot of content coming up. Uh, We're going to be doing our draft stuff. We're looking at, you know, who are the top 10 QBs, running backs, uh, a bunch of defensive players as well. You're getting those from me and Mitch. Um, so the draft stuff, look out for that. Um, some, some good content coming on the way. Um, expect a lot of work to be put in uh, and a lot of investment. You're, you're going to like the stuff we're, we're coming out between Mitch and I. So. Mm-hmm. And I got I got some uh, free agency videos. I went over the quarterbacks. We'll go with the running backs and wide receivers as we uh, look at the potential free agents as well. Now we got a franchise tag time coming up soon, so that could throw off a running back if Le'Veon Bell's franchise tag. But, yeah, we got some free agency videos too. All right. Thanks, guys, for joining us. It's Mitch, Anthony, and Dylan from the Bottom Line View. Peace out. Peace. See ya.